On today's show, draft day is upon us. Who are the Dallas Mavericks taking with the 10th pick? Are they going to use the 10th pick? I'm going to give you what I think is the Dallas Mavericks draft board, 1-30, to on today's Locked On Mavs. I'm Luka Doncic, and this is Locked On Mavericks. NBA champion. He is our game. It's good, and the Mavericks have won the game. I don't believe you shouldn't be here. Loyalty never fades away. And welcome. You are locked on to the Dallas Mavericks. My name is Nick Engstead, media member and NBA channel manager for the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Draft day. I'm going to let it ride. Thanks for being part of the show and making Locked On Mavs your first listen every day. Join the Raccoon Squad, be in every day, or subscribe and follow for free. Just search Locked On Mavericks wherever you get your podcasts or on YouTube. But the best way you can help us grow the show is to listen every day and to comment anything below. Let us know, who do you want the Mavs to take in the NBA draft at number 10? Or if they trade down, let us know either way. Today's episode is brought to you by Bird Dogs. Go to birddogs.com slash locked on NBA. They'll throw in a free custom Bird Dogs Yeti style tumbler with every order. Also, if you want to help support the show, text us, get text alerts from us. Isaac was doing a Q&A, asked me anything about the draft yesterday. Uh, I'm sending out rumors all the time that we're hearing on our subtext. Get actual text from us. Subscribe to our subtext. Click the link below. We're like 12 away from 100, which is a big, which is a big goal we had to start. So if we can get 12 of you to sign up for it. Uh, that would be awesome to get a group going there. Uh, so appreciate each and every one of you. It does help support the show. And joining me, as always, my co-host, writer, contributor at Mavs.com. The Draft Day Dynasty, the one more thing, King. What you got for me, Isaac Harris? I'm so ready for this NBA draft. Man. Oh. I'm so excited. I'm consuming all the content right now. Yes. Having all the text conversations. Just try. I will say this. I think this is one of the hardest years to figure out what dallas is going to do like i think it, it's so difficult to figure out of you know even in the subtext thing last night everybody's like what, what do you think they're going to do we'll talk about that today we'll make our final predictions of what we think will happen and all of that but it's like it, it, you know and you know i've been a pretty big proponent of i think they should trade down yeah. and somebody's like hey what do you think i mean is this going to happen now like why haven't we heard about it and it's like well, now, I mean, like if some of these guys drop, like if a Cam Whitmore drops, then I mean, that could really test some things for Dallas of saying, do we really need to trade back a few spots if a Cam Whitmore is there? So I don't expect I mean, I, I think we might see some the fireworks happen like in the middle of the draft based off where people fall. There's a lot that could go on. I'm very excited for it. We will have a live show on Locked On NBA. So go to the Locked On NBA channel. Subscribe to that. I'll be hosting that. I'm also hosting Locked On NBA tonight. So if you want to go listen to that show with me and Pat the Designer, we'll have you covered on that channel. So go check out Locked On NBA. If you want a live show during the draft, we'll have coverage here. We'll obviously have an episode tomorrow. We are five days a week all throughout the offseason. Nobody does more Dallas Mavericks episodes than we do. I think combined, like if you combined all the other Dallas Mavericks podcasts, we wouldn't do as many as we do uh, today. Like Isaac said, we're going to give you our predictions, what we think is going to happen. But let's start here. All right, I'm going to give you the draft board. I'm going to give you what I think is the draft board. Isaac is going to critique it and say what, who he thinks should be higher, should be lower. I ran this by a couple of ghost writers, including uh, Mavs draft himself, Richard Stamen. Uh, he had a couple of notes for me and I kept some of them, but I, I didn't change some of them, but we'll start here. Let's just go one to 30 through it and see, see this is who I think is going to be on their board. Number one, Victor Roman. You got the list off 30 names. No, cause you're going to stop me when you, there's one that you think should be higher or lower. And then we'll talk uh, about it. Number one, Victor Roman Yama. Number two, uh, number two, I'd go Brandon Miller. Okay. Yeah, I actually would too. Three Scoot, Scoot Henderson. This is what this is what I think Dallas's board is going to be. Although, a little worried about Brandon Miller's goat conversation. <laughs> so, um, there's one there, thing to model your game after Paul George. Another thing to say he's the goat. So. Yeah, that is a, that is a fascinating clip. We'll talk about it on Locked On NBA today, actually. But yeah, that's a fascinating clip of somebody having definitely having a draft prompt, like something that they were supposed to say in pre workout interviews and things like that. And then just like used it in the wrong context. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so that's the top three. It's top three for everybody. Number four is Jairus Walker to me. I think he's above the Thompson twins and Cam Whitmore for who the Mavericks would want. Like, I think that he would be very high for them. 
Yeah, I have Jairus Walker at five. Um, I have a SAR at four. Um, mm. But yeah, I mean, I think Jairus Walker. I mean, we gave some hot takes, or at least I did uh, on yesterday's pod. I would take Jairus Walker over Cam Whitmore or Taylor Hendricks. Said that yesterday. Still stand by it now. I, yeah, he would be awesome in Dallas. I'm going to go Cam Whitmore five. Okay. Because I, I think his ability to score, his shooting, like they're going to want some of that. I put the Thompson twins seven and eight after Taylor Hendricks at six. Wow, you take Taylor Hendricks over the Thompson Twins. This is what I think the Mavericks will do. I think the Mavericks will value that more because I think that he'll be able to come in earlier. It's going to take Amen and Asar a little while to, to, to develop. Now, they could come in and develop and eventually be what Ben Simmons was supposed to be, but it may take them, like, I don't know, would Jason Kidd play them? Jason Kidd didn't play Josh Green the fir- his first year. So, like, how long will their shot take? So that That's why I have him a little bit higher. He's just a ready-made fit right away for a front office and for a coaching staff that needs guys to play right away. Yeah. I, I mean, I hear that for sure. I, I think the Thompson twins are, are they're just so world-class athletes that I think that even if it takes a year, I think you just can't be on the wrong side of history with that, or at least I, I wouldn't want to, but, um, but yeah, I, w- I would have Jairus. I would have a SAR. I would have Jairus Walker. I would have Cam Whitmore. Then I'd have Amen. I think, I think for me, then it gets into for Dallas, Anthony Black versus like Hendricks. But you think Hendricks is way up there? I think Hendricks is, is higher. He's a bigger he's a bigger guard, can defend, can shoot really well. Uh, the shooting, I think the, the shooting to me knocked down Asar Amen and Anthony Black. Anthony Black, I have at nine, so I have uh, yeah I have the Thompson twins and Anthony Black seven eight nine. The shooting just knocks them down a peg. I think they're better than everybody else in the draft, obviously, but the shooting with Cam Whitmore with Taylor Hendricks, and then a little bit with Jairus Walker. Jairus Walker more just the, the size and the defensive ability. But the shooting knocked those guys up just, just a peg because I think this is what the Mavericks are going to value. Mm. I, I'm i feeling good about my Anthony Black stock right now. It feels like it's it continues to go up. Um, are you going to say something? Now he's mocked a, a lot to the, the Wizards. He's mocked a lot to the Jazz at 8 and 9. So like he's gonna he's probably going to be gone before the Mavericks get to the board. Yeah, I think he can actually go sooner than that. I think Orlando's really going to give him a, a shot there at, at six uh, to come in and be their be their point guard with them. But yeah, I th- I think for Dallas it's that top it's the top nine, and you know in in one of those orders of how whoever you have I I, I have Hendricks there at that ninth spot, but uh, for Dallas I think what Dallas is trying to do. Uh, got this question on, on subtext a couple of times. Like, hey, do you think the lively stuff for Dallas is smokescreen? Or do you think it? You think Dallas is genuinely interested? And I think it can be both. I think Dallas can be interested in lively for sure. But you know what's, what would be the smartest thing for Dallas to do right now? Is to really commit to, you know, Derek Lively and say, dude, we're interested and make it public. Like they have, yes. Uh, to try to try to build it up and to make it a, a that next group go to you know, go to pick ten to dare uh, some of these other teams like in Atlanta or whoever. It's like, hey, if you yes. want Derek Lively, the the only guy outside of like maybe Clowney or Najee outside of Victor um, that is going to be a five in the league and can do what he can do, then you're going to have to come up to ten to get him. So I think it's a little smoke screenish, but I also think they're interested in him at the same time. Does anyone smell anything smoky? It's smokescreen season, baby. There's all kinds of stuff. But I'd be surprised. It'd be hilarious if all these Atlanta Dallas rumors were just like nothing. Like there is no trade at the end. And it's you know, odds are right now that there'll be no trade of of the tenth pick and and um, you know, Davis Bertans or Tim Hardaway for John Collins in fifteen or Clint Capella in fifteen. Like if none of that mattered at the end of the day. Uh, and all we heard was just that some kind of smoke screen to try and boost up the value of of 10 or, or downgrade the value of 10 or whatever it's, it's going to ha- it happens. I have Derek lively at 10. I think that that's where they would go after that top nine, like you said. Uh, and I think that it, it eventually, like, I think, I think Derek lively has made his way up there of all the maybe smoke screens and things. It seems like we we've heard from reports from Mark Stein, who's not a draft guy. Like, he's just hearing stuff from teams. Yeah. He's not coming in and say, I think that he's 10th because of what I've seen. He's saying, this is what I've heard teams talk about. And so if Mark Stein's saying that, I think he's very clearly the 10th player. In oh, I think now. he's, I think he goes 10 to 13, like a lock. I think it's Dallas, Orlando, OKC, or, um, 
Toronto is 13 I or think. Toronto. I think it's one of those four teams that Lively's going to end up on. Yeah, that, that'll be interesting. So coming up, let's get into the next group of, of players right here and who the Mavericks would be passing on if they don't take Derek Lively with the 10th pick. And then, of course, we're going to explain who we, what we think will happen with the Mavericks on draft night. So we'll talk about all of that coming up. But before we do, let me tell you about Bird Dogs. Bird Dogs has clothing for pretty much every occasion. They got shorts that look really good if you're going to a Rangers game. They have shorts that look good if you're going to a meeting. If your business is a little more casual, if you want to do that. They got uh, joggers. They have all kinds of uh, like sweats and things like that. And they're comfortable. They're amazing. Bird Dog shorts do the exact same thing as Lululemon, but they fit way better. They really do. My shorts fit so well. They took all of our measurements and... Like, usually I have a hard time finding, like, shorts and pants that fit really well. And these work so well. I love them. I use them. I, I wear them all the time. I wear them. And my wife goes, hey, those look good on you. And that's a great feeling. Uh, hey, <laughs> congrats. Uh, go to birddogs.com slash NBA for a free Yeti-style tumbler with your order. That's birddogs.com slash NBA for a free Yeti-style tumbler with your order. You won't want to take your bird dogs off. We promise. Check it out. Birddogs.com slash NBA. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out with us on Lockdown Mavs, making us part of your day, being part of the show, part of the Raccoon Squad. We appreciate it. Again, we will have a live Lockdown NBA draft show where I'll have a whole bunch of hosts. Isaac will probably jump in there on the live show, talk about some stuff. I'll be there with Leaf Tulane of Lockdown NBA Big Board, and we'll have you covered live on the Lockdown NBA YouTube channel during the draft. All right, we're going through what I think is going to be the Mavericks Big Board through this. We've gone through the top nine, which is pretty much everybody's top nine. A little different order than everybody else. Derek Lively is, is clearly the 10th player, and I think that he is the, in spot 10 for the Mavericks right now. He could be higher for them, I think, just because of need. Like I think the Mavericks could look at this and say, all right, I know it's it's hard to pass on those Thompson twins, but we need a big really badly. Like We just can't walk in and next Oh, there's season. no way you can take Lively over a Thompson twin. I'm, I'm saying the Mavericks could think that. Sheesh. Number 11, number 11 to me, I'll, I'll put Case and Wallace. That's good. Yeah, I, I have him right there, too. I'm, I'm really fascinated to see where he goes on draft night because I feel like now, I mean, I, I was watching an NBA.com thing on TV, you know, later on or last night, and I think they they mocked him at like 21 to Brooklyn. No, that's, and, that's dumb. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my gosh, like that's a that's a little drop for him there. That means so, you're uh, taking like you're taking – Grady Dick, you're taking Jalen Hood Safino, you're taking Kobe Bufkin. You're like how many guards would you have to take between <laughs> between eleven and twenty one before you get to Casey Wallace? Like I'd have Case Case and Wallace is to me like, you know, he's the the six three Drew Holiday type, like defensive guard that has enough guard skills and playmaking pick and roll skills that like eventually he'll be a really good ball handler. And to me, the Mavericks needs are are this. It's it's center, starting center number one, big wing defenders number two. And then three, mm -hmm. it's third ball handler. Like, they still need that. Jaden Hardy, I don't think, is going to be that in the NBA. They haven't run Jaden Hardy as a point guard in Summer League or in the G League or on the Mavericks. So if, if they, you know, Case and Wallace would fit that third need. Now, it's not their biggest need, but it is one of their needs. And so, to me, that that's why I have him at 11th. Yeah, I, I feel you on that one. I, I do think that even though I have Wallace ahead of those other guards, I do think the group's probably a little closer um, in the sense of like case and Wallace. I think Dallas would really like um, hood Shafino. Um, I'm I, giving case, I, I'm giving case and Wallace the Kentucky bump though. Yeah. I mean, if Scott Tomlin has anything to do. With <laughs> no. it, yeah. The director of PR for the Mavericks uh, is a big Kentucky guy. Uh, hmm. And, uh, but, but I think that he gets a Kentucky bump, bump because we've seen Devin Booker, Jamal Murray, SGA. We've seen the, like Darren Fox. We've seen so many Kentucky guards come out and be much better in the NBA. Maybe he's the next guy to do that, but he's 11 for me. This next group uh, is pretty close actually. Yeah, give me your next couple of guys. Cause I'm, I'm curious on where you have this next or you have one of the guy number 12. Give me the guy whose name we finally learned how to pronounce Bilal Koulibaly. Uh, that's who I was going to ask you. I'm like, yeah, how, how far Somebody texted me about Koulibaly for Dallas uh, yesterday, and I'm like, you know, <laughs> I think past regime, I'd be like, dude, they're they're all over 
Kula Bali, right? <laughs> they just love um, the international prospects, love length, like all that. I don't know. I don't know about the new regime, but it's all about for me, like, can he contribute now? Because I do right. think outside of like a Thompson twin who might take just a little bit more time, I think Dallas has to take somebody that can play right now. If they're picking, you know, up near that 10 to 12 spot, if they move back into the twenties, something like that, then yeah, you can take a guy who's, you know, going to, you know, be in the rotation coming off the bench, eight, nine man, something like that. Well, the idea is that they, if they traded back, then they filled that roster spot with a player that they got in that trade. Right? So if you don't do that and you just take a 10, you're like, all right, if I just take Derek lively at 10, then I'm expecting him to start and to play or maybe not start, but to at least play in that rotation spot. Uh, yeah. If you know, if they've traded back, then they've, they filled that spot. But yeah, I, I've cool Bali there. He's, you know, six, 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 eight with a seven, two wingspan, like just the, the best like measurables you could have for a wing like that. Um, shot the three ball. Okay. It, you know, played next to Victor women, Yama on his, you know, his metropolitan 92 team. He's been, he's one of the big risers in the draft. Like people had him at the beginning of the second round. I feel like at the start of the draft process. And now he's, he could go before 10 to the Mavericks. There have been weird rumors about him yeah. all over the place, but I have him at 12. Um, 13 and 14, I have kind of paired. And then 15, 16, I have paired two. Okay. Four, 13 and 14 are Kobe Bufkin and Jalen Hood Shafino back to back. I think both of these guys are guards that can run a pick and roll, that can defend, that are scrappy, that can, you know, uh, Kobe Bufkin has a little bit of shorter wingspan. He's 6'8, but Jalen Hushafino has a 6'10 wingspan. But they're both these guards that have, like led a team that could be that third gu- third guard off the bench. Like they would both be incredible fits next to Jaden Hardy for trying to develop, you know, a backcourt like that. Uh, I think both of those guys. Kobe, there's been weird rumors about Kobe Bufkin too, uh, and then Tim Cato recently took Jalen Hood Shafino with with the tenth pick for the Mavericks in the athletic draft mock draft that they did. Uh, and so yeah, I think that that those two guys would be above the Grady Dick Jordan Hawkins next group for me. I li- yeah, I like I like Hood Shafino a lot. We talked about him. Uh, you know, we did a, a pod last week on we kind of did three prospects each uh, in that, and he was one of my guys uh, in that one. Um, I don't know. I don't know how to pinpoint what Kobe Bufkin is uh, because yeah, like you said, it's like it, some people will just like love him, and, yeah. you know, and could be you know as a late top ten pick there or. You know, is he going to be like mid lottery? You know, like in the teens somewhere. So I, I, I don't know what to what to do with him. But you, as funny as the name Grady Dick is, you think all those names are over Grady Dick? I think so. Yeah, because listen to the okay. names that are above him: Derek Lively, center, need like you know can be really good. Koulibaly, big wing, need. Uh, Kaysen Wallace, third guard that can do a lot of things. Really good defensively. Kobe Bufkin, yeah. Jalen Hood, Shafino can can run an offense. You're not asking Grady Dick to run an offense, and True. both of those guys can defend too. And Grady Dick, you're not really asking him to to outright defend either. And so I think I think Grady Dick and Jordan Hawkins both get a little bit of a, a down bump in, on the Mavs board if you're just looking at what they want. I have those guys at uh, 15 and 16 respectively, Grady Dick hmm. and then Jordan Hawkins. Yeah, I'm with you on it. I, I I would take the other guys over over Grady Dick. I'm a little bit higher on Jordan Hawkins. Um, then Grady Dick and I'd probably man, you put him higher. Yeah. I do like Hawkins a lot, and I think he would fit in Dallas. I think he would be like a supercharged Seth Curry, yeah, in, in Dallas. Um, and just that role, like I feel like I could just like picture that role right now of what Hawkins would be. The only thing is, if you are, I don't know, got a Woj tweet on. Uh-oh. Uh oh, I guess the Porzingis deal is happening. <laughs> Um, shout out to KP. I was gonna laugh earlier because Mike is he really gonna get traded for Brogdon and Gallinari? Which is and the, uh, it's the Bizarro Dinwiddie Bertans package. Yeah, yeah. It's like if you just uh, but um, yeah, I'm with you on on these so far. Yeah, you like okay. I, I thought that you would think I'd be too high on both those two guards. Um, and then Shafino uh, and Bufkin. Yeah, no, I like Shafino a lot especially as the third ball handler, especially playing next to uh, next to Jaden Harding. Hood Shafino gives me like a bigger, but less good, like Jalen Brunson vibe. Cause he's so good in the mid range. So good at like those things, not great catch and shoot as a three point shooter, but he can hit a three point shot off the, off the pick and roll. You're like, okay, that's just like a weird shot diet, but he's still really good. I, I'd take, 
I take Omax over Grady Dick. I have Omax seventeen. You've t- you've okay. talked to me. Tell tell everybody about Omax and your your love of Olivier Maxence Prosper and why you think that he should be high. I, feel like I have I've him done at seventeen. This times, but no, but you're gonna do it again because people haven't listened to us. So. No, I mean I love this guy. He's out of Marquette, and yeah, I mean he is a um, dude is gonna hustle and bust his butt. He's killed all the workouts. Super smart guy. Um, exactly what you're looking for in the NBA. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I've been saying all, this long, uh, all along, even before he's been mocked here recently, rising up boards. I think he's a top 20 pick. I've been saying that for a week or so now. I think he's, <laughs> I think he'll go top 20 in the draft. And if Dallas moves back to that 15, 16, 17 spot, you don't, you don't want to have me on the pod that night. <laughs> if they walk away with Prosper and dude, if they walked away with like DeAndre Hunter and, and, prosper yeah just call it in let's just go down to victory park you know together <laughs> you and me just with like 240s just like hanging out and like, no one else yeah. is there it's just us and <laughs> security yeah. leads us away all right coming up i'll give you the rest of the board then we'll tell you who, what who we think the mavericks will take or what they will do at the draft talk about that coming up But before we do, let me tell you about eBay Motors. For a championship team, it's all about making sure that every player is a perfect fit. Same with the draft. You have to make sure that your player is a good fit culture-wise, good fit player-wise, and all that. It's the same when it comes to your vehicle. Every part needs to fit just right. So go check out eBay Motors with eBay Guaranteed Fit. You can be sure that every part you need fits right the first time around. Just add your ride to my garage. Look for the green check to know that the part will fit or your money back. Because just like in sports, confidence, baby, confidence is the name of the game when you shop on eBay Motors. And with over 122 million parts to choose from, you'll be back in the game in no time. After all, it's easy to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed. Get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices on ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only. Exclusions, they do apply. All right, Isaac Harris, we're talking about the Mavericks draft board. This is what I think the Mavericks draft board is going to look like. So let's get into the rest of it here. Um, All right, I've gone through the top 17. 18, Leonard Miller. I think he's just got a lot of upside. I know you're not the big fan of him, but I think he's a big wing that has a ton of upside. Uh, and I think that, that they could go that Richard Stamen really talked me into him in the, the episode that I did with him. You can listen to that one if you want to hear more about Leonard Miller. Number 19, I have Jet Howard. Another shooter the Mavericks could have on this. Number 20, I've got uh, another Frenchman, Ryan Repair. Interesting. A okay. little, little high, but I, I just think a big wing, long wingspan will really fit a need for them. Come on. You, think, you're already passing up one of my guys. That, I think he's higher than some of these some of these other guys. Uh, is your guy Gigi Jackson? No, it's not. It's Jaime Jaquez. Where do you have Jaquez at? I don't you don't have, have him in your top I don't, thirty. I don't have him. I should. I I'm should. Gonna come over where, there. where should I? Okay. Where should I put I'm him? I'm gonna smack that. I I blame Richard. Okay. Where where should I put him then? I struggle. I struggle with the end of this because a lot of these guys I feel like are all bunched up, and then there's a lot of guys like I don't know what to do with Keontae George, Nick Smith Jr. Like I don't know what to do with these guys. Yeah. That yeah, somebody somebody uh, uh, wrote in the subtext and was like, "Hey, like who who would be the WTF pick?" Uh, for Dallas and and I and I said Nick Nick Smith just because I think that's the only lane of prospect that I just can't see Dallas taking. I can't see him taking um the Nick Smith, the Keontae George, even though I don't dislike Keontae George. I like his talent. I just think they kind of have that at home with Jaden Hardy in a way. And it's like I don't know what they would kind of really do with either one of them, but um but I like him. Um so yeah I mean I just like Hawkes a lot for what Dallas. I mean, as far as like wings, um, I, I like I have him. So I did a top twenty yeah. uh, for for Dallas, and and I have in those last three spots, I have Hawkes, uh, Leonard Miller, and and Najee. You know the guy you talked about last week. Yep, of Barcelona. But yeah, I have James Najee at twenty one, right, right out there. I think that he he he's just going to take a little while. Big big center with really yeah. long wings, seven seven wingspan. Uh, he's just going to take some time, and I don't know if the Mavericks are going to want to do that. Noah Clowney, I have at 22. Similar reasons. He's raw. He's going to take a lot of time. Richard Stamen, again, is high on him. He he talked. I had him, like, at 28, and he talked me up to 22 on him. Um, 
Then I have this group, like like you just talked about, Bryce Sensabaugh, Keontae George, Nick Smith Jr., like just guys I don't think that they're going to go for. No. But they're still, they're still really good talents, and like you wouldn't pass You need to up. have Hawkins over all those guys. Hawkins is going to step in day one and play for a playoff team. He's going to... I swear if Miami drafts Prosper or Hawkes, I'm gonna be so pissed because they're gonna like they're prototypical Miami type of players. And Hawkes would play like he would be in the rotation for Dallas next year. Denver is gonna pick him with all those picks, like those those like they have like a bunch of picks like in the thirties. And I yeah. think they're they're gonna get him some out. Yeah, okay. I'll put Hawkes there. Uh that pushes them all down. Chris Murray at twenty seven, Dariq Whitehead twenty eight, Gigi Jackson twenty nine, Colby Jones is at thirty. Like Anybody Colby Jones. Anybody that I don't have on this list, Trace Jackson Davis is a guy people have been talking about a lot recently. Mm. Uh, Maxwell Lewis from Pepperdine. I, <laughs> I talked to uh, Locked On Clippers host um, Darian Vaziri about about Maxwell Lewis. He went to Pepperdine, and uh, Darian does a bunch of uh, Pepperdine games. Like he calls them, or he does, uh, you know, he does either play by play or he does like PA announcing for them. And he's like, I just don't see it. Like the guy was supposed to be our number one guy just over and over again. I did, I didn't see it in the guy. So. He had me really down on on him, but anybody on this top thirty that you would put in besides Jaime Hawkes? Um, I don't think so. I mean, I like Ben Shepard, but yeah, I think Hawkes is the only guy. And I mean, I like Jordan. I like Jordan Walsh a lot too out of Arkansas, but mm. that that's just if Dallas if Dallas you know gets like the twenty eighth pick or something. Which what a transition. Let's transition to what we think Dallas is gonna do. Did you just make up the name Ben Shepard? That's just such sounds like a name that's just made up, like 2K made it up. (laughs) Sounds like a... And also that he uh, went to Belmont. That just sounds so fake to me. Sounds like you're... All right. Make the the prediction. What do the Mavericks do? Not necessarily at 10, but with 10. Like, what do you... Do they trade back? Do they figure it out? What do they do? All right. In in an attempt of just trying to, like, completely just shoot the shot and just say, like... Shoot it. All right be very specific and just be like, man, if it hits, we're going to clip it and it's going to go. Um, I'll say this. I think Utah sets there at nine. I got a whole specific situation for you. here. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm leaning back. I'm ready. I think Utah sitting there at nine and they take whoever's left over out of that top nine. And I, let's just say it's Cam Whitmore or Taylor yeah. Hendricks. Yeah. And then it gets to 10 at Dallas, but they really like Kula Bali. And then they call up Dallas and they say, all right, let's do a deal. We want to move up to 10. I think Utah is going to be the team, not Atlanta. And I think they're going to do some type of package around Kelly Olenek, Rudy Gay, 16 and 28 for Bertons and 10. Mm. For Dallas, you move back to the 16th spot. <clears throat> Utah walks away with Hendricks and Kulabali. Dallas moves back to the 16th spot. They pick up another first rounder and they get a Kelly Olenek who becomes part of their like big rotation, who's going to be in your rotation and yeah, a would. solid quality big. Um, and then at 16, I think Dallas stands, stands put at 16 and gets either, a, you know, an O max or, and, you, and before you sit there, start thinking about who's going to be there at 16. I mean, if you just go down through the list, if you, if you add lively as a 10th player, and then let's just go ahead and say Koulibaly, Buffkin and Grady Dick is it's going to be locked in as far as off the board at 16 just based off like mocks and stuff then you got then it's like two other players before the 16th pick and you still have Case and Wallace you still have Hood Shafino you still have Omax um you know there's just different guys too there so like if you trade it back if Dow I could see Dallas doing that picking up Kel- it's Kelly Olenek they're walking out of draft night with like Kelly Olenek Omax and you know somebody at, at Leonard Miller at 28. Mm. So there I you. like it. There's, I like it. There's, that's, my, there's my prediction. That sounds realistic to me. <laughs> so there, there's gonna be a lot of comments that are like, oh, I hate that, but it's because it's probably realistic. Also, the uh the Celtics trade and all that is going through. Uh we'll have that on lockdown NBA. The, the Celtics Marcus, traded Marcus Smart. Marcus Smart is going to the Grizzlies, and Tyus Jones is, is heading to the Wizards, I think. Um, oh my gosh it's a it's a mess right now they're trying to still put it together but uh what, midnight what i think the mavericks are going to do well they just have midnight until porzingis had to pick up that deal so wait washington we got to talk about this for okay a washington, washington's <laughs> we don't know that we don't know the full deal yet like it still could but if washington gets tyus jones do they still go for anthony black at, at eight yeah yeah you could i mean washington's got nothing like and tyus jones isn't like it. 
I mean, I think he might be the next Jalen Brunson, but I don't think he is Jalen Brunson to where, like, he becomes your starting starting point guard and you feel really good about it and he can, like, be the potentially first or second best player on a playoff team. Like, I don't know if he's that. Chris Middleton just declined his option. Interesting. He's probably going to get the long-term extension, but... They, what else are, What else are the Bucks going to do? Like, the Bucks are in a, a tough spot where him and Brooke Lopez could just both leave and then they're just screwed. I love this time of year, man. This is great. This is not uh, a good podcast stuff. No, it's just, not. <laughs> but <laughs> uh, for what I think the Mavericks are going to do, I think they do the Pelicans deal that I mentioned a couple weeks ago. They trade down to 14. They get Jonas Valanciunas, one-year deal, about mm. 50, what was it, 14, 15 million. They get him. They maybe send Davis down there or Tim Hardaway down there. They, remember that the Pelicans wanted to sign Tim Hardaway to that deal a little yeah. while ago. Remember, maybe that's something that they still want to do uh, and get Tim Hardaway. So either one of those guys goes down there if they want to get off money or if they want Tim Hardaway. And then uh, I think they take one of the Kobe Bufkin, Jalen Hood, Shafino, if Case and Wallace somehow falls to 14, because you're only at 14 then. Maybe Koulibaly yeah. is there. Grady Dick maybe falls. And so then then you can pick up somebody that will take a little bit of time, but at least you got a center in Jonas Valanciunas. That, that's my prediction on what they do. And we both think that they trade yeah. down. Yeah, I do think they trade down. I've said that a lot. I, I I would be shocked if they just, you know, stood there at 10, took a player, unless somebody falls. The, um, the other thing I could but, really see them doing, this is going to be my secondary prediction, is they have a bunch of these trades, Atlanta, New Orleans, the Jazz, a bunch of stuff, and it just all falls through on them. And then they just pick Derek Lively and say, and then they, then the whole time, like every press conference is, he was our guy the whole time. We, we wanted him. He was like, they would just play it like that the whole time. And I think that would be fine. I don't think it would be the best thing that they could do, but I think that would be fine. And I think that that would be a solid move. I don't think that it would be the best, greatest thing. They'd still need another rotation player and free agency will be weird for them, but I think that would be fine. Yeah. I mean, walking out with like Case and Wallace and, you know, Valanciunas would be would be pretty nice and so I'm out I'm all in on yeah if if they walk away with Omax they walk away with a Hawkes if they get into you know they move back to the 20s I think that would be great for them but either way I think Dallas is moving back I think they're going to pick up a, a solid rotation piece that we know is going to be in the rotation hopefully a starter uh, and they're going to add a draft pick maybe even two I'll end it on this somebody somebody sent a subtext last night and said and said, "Hey, what's your just what's your out of nowhere trade that you just, you just had to pick a player out there that you're just like out of nowhere and you'd be like, wow, okay, they haven't been linked to Dallas at all." I'd say DeAndre Hunter. Watch out for DeAndre Hunter. Wow, the yeah, the other Hawks guy. Like who who else could yeah. it be? Uh, the Grizzlies are sending 2023 20, and 2024 20, first round picks to the Celtics for Marcus Smart. Yeah, so Tyus Jones plus two first equals Marcus Smart. That's so yeah. Weird. So so Mavs fans, think about that. As you hound us on Twitter right now saying, why didn't Dallas get Marcus Smart? Well, yeah, it took two firsts at <laughs> Tyus Jones. So it'd be Josh Green and two firsts. So uh, are you giving up two firsts and Josh Green for Marcus Smart? Basically right. all three yeah, of your assets. Right, right. Like, that would be it. So Probably not. Uh, there you go. Guys, we will be back again live on Lockdown NBA throughout the draft. Me and Leaf Tulane. Isaac will probably jump in. A bunch of other hosts will probably jump in from time to time. Thanks so much for listening to Lockdown Maps. Peace out. Boom!